For Carly Simon and her family, singing is as natural as breathing. And I am a rabbit, so and I'm in the habit of eating carrots. But one skill was a struggle. Music is something that we can do so much more easily than we can in the reading department. Simon, her daughter, and grandson have dyslexia, and that's just fine with them. Dyslexia isn't a disadvantage, it's an advantage. It gives you this incredible um, strength. New Center 5's Heather Unruh has their story of rewriting methods in the classroom. The pilot program just launched in Martha's Vineyard Middle Schools. And changing attitudes toward dyslexia. All of these kids are gonna benefit. No disability. Next on Chronicle. Good evening. Heather Unruh joins us tonight with a report from Martha's Vineyard where an attitude adjustment is taking place. Kids commonly mocked and bullied are now finding themselves drenched in self confidence. On a sunny August morning, this island, known for its scenic beauty, summer crowds, and celebrity sightings, paused and listened to young new voices ready to be heard. A team, swimmers making waves, but they're not chasing ribbons and trophies. The prize is getting their message out and watching the ripples spread far and wide. What's it like to be part of a team like that? It's great to see everybody else who has the same thing going on. In the water, they're equals, unlike the classroom where they often fall behind. It just feels like you're all like kind of like have one thing in common. What they have in common is dyslexia, a learning disorder characterized by serious reading challenges. Like the others, Ben is smart and able, but has a hard time decoding printed words. It doesn't really look jumbly. It's just like I'm a slow reader, so I'm not like the best at it. Neither is Chip, and his parents say it did a number on his self-esteem. He really thought it was something that made him different from other kids, but not in a good way. I thought that I was dumb. But not anymore. Chip, outrageous, buddy. Awesome. He and the other kids are beginning to feel gifted. Have you seen a change in him? It, 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 totally, he has much more confidence when he goes to school. Thanks to everybody, we did it. Because of this man, Dean Braganier, who has changed the way these kids see themselves and their disability. The way that he makes the kids feel like they have so much to offer this world. It's really empowered Walker to know his potential and to be able to know that he's going to be OK. When you see them come to that realization and feel good about themselves again, how does that make you feel? Like I found the meaning of life. Braganier understands their plight. Growing up dyslexic himself was not easy. And I experienced the bullying and I experienced the hazing. And much like Chip, he was particularly hard on himself, says Mom Penny. I remember around fourth grade when he'd come get off the school bus and he'd just come in and he'd say, I'm the stupidest kid in the class, which was just heartbreaking because obviously it's far from that. What experience, maturity, and research taught Braganier is that dyslexic brains have what he calls superpowers. Dyslexics excel. They, they are exceptional at macro thinking. They can see businesses, mechanical engines, human interaction. They can see it all from a very crystal clear perspective. What I'm going to be speaking to you about are the strengths of dyslexia. And to help others discover their yeah. gifts, he created the nonprofit Notice Ability. We have a disability when it comes to reading but we have these tremendous assets, these tremendous abilities. So what if people just noticed our ability? And then as you say, it's no disability. A big motivating factor is his eight-year-old son, Bodhi, who inherited dyslexia. Braganier wants to change the narrative so the advantages of being dyslexic far outweigh the disadvantages. Bodhi's message to kids who don't have it? When we both get older and we develop our skills, we'll be even higher than you are in the ranks. Right now we're lower than you, we're gonna get higher. M-I-N-D. And to help dyslexic learners learn those skills, Noticeability partnered with education experts to develop an online curriculum. The pilot program just launched in Martha's Vineyard Middle Schools. 
I've been so excited to have this program come to Martha's Vineyard Public Schools because it really is going to be able to teach to the dyslexic strength and all of these kids are going to benefit. And it's made Chip realize that learning is not just about reading and remembering things, but learning is learning anyway you slice it. You know in your heart that your kids are awesome and that they're going to be great in life, but to like have to sit in IEP meetings and you know always talk about the negative part of their learning style. So in a way it's changed my approach to you know those those types of IEP meetings where you're like, "Hey, my son is awesome at this and let's not forget that." <laughs> the boys helped raise over $125,000 for the nonprofit's mission and learned a lot about themselves. Have you discovered what you're really gifted at yet? Bringing people together, I guess. What do you feel like it brings to you? Another way to think that other people don't usually. Just go out and embrace it. Yeah. Who, who cares? It was really cool that I met other people that were just like me. There's more kids that are dyslexic, so I don't feel like I'm the only one and it, it just feels great. This is really remarkable. And as we heard throughout great. the I piece, yeah, as we heard throughout the piece, you know, the dyslexic mind is complicated and there are difficulties, obviously, but then there are also these often exceptional abilities. Yeah, exceptional abilities, and there are four specialties in life, in, in success, uh, the career world, that they tend to really excel at. Engineering, arts, architecture, and entrepreneurship, and that's what Dean hmm his skill is in particular, but this curriculum is online. It gives kids the tools they need to discover the skills that they have. It teaches those skills, it reinforces those skills, and builds on them. So, and you said Dean, uh, son, Bodie, at eight, is already developing businesses. He's, he's got two business plans that he's already <laughs> come up with, and he's already thinking to the third one. They have this unbelievable ability to see it through with perfect clarity. Wow. And he has taken it all that way with a couple of different ideas. That is an aptitude Nurturing for sure. Nurturing parents. Mm -hmm. Help That's a lot. Key, yeah. Talented and amazing Carly Simon is philosophical about her dyslexia. The glass may be half empty in one area, but it's half full in another. No Disability founder Dean Braganier and his family call Martha's Vineyard home. It's where he and his wife, Sally Taylor, met. Sally's a Vineyard native, and she is the daughter of the island's first lady of song. We can never know about the days to come. Her songs have touched millions. Carly Simon, the legendary singer-songwriter, is known for her seductive voice and passionate lyrics. What's less known about her is how her journey began. I would say that my family has been given the gift of music and that we all take to music because music is something that we can do so much more easily than we can, you know, in the reading department. Reading was a challenge for Carly. Glad you brought these out. I haven't seen these books in a long time. And for the two children she had with James Taylor, Sally and Ben, they are all dyslexic. Carly says her dyslexia was complicated because she also stammered as a child. It wasn't until my mother taught me how to, how to give words rhythm that I began to be able to speak more fluently. So. There was one time at the, at the table where I was, I was saying, pass the butter, and I couldn't get the pee out. And my mother said, try to sing it, or try to stamp your hand on your knee with the rhythm of the word. Will you please pass the butter? And once I thought of it like a song, it could be any kind of song at all. Please pass the butter. <laughs> Nobody does. Song became her lifeline that she ultimately passed on to her children. Split decisions and wasted time and emptiness. If we split up, is that best? Daughter Sally Taylor's now a grown woman and talented musician in her own right. When I got diagnosed with dyslexia and I came home 
and my mom greeted me at the door and I had this diagnosis in my hand and I handed it to her thinking, okay, this is sort of the end of my belonging, my, the end of my fitting in. And my mom's like, oh, thank God. You know, congratulations. Now, you know, it's clear that you're part of the family. The diagnosis always seems to me that, that it's along with some bad news. It doesn't seem as, it's not a diagnosis as much as, much, much as it is putting the label on something that wasn't so clear before. What's clear today is love, support, and music was medicinal in their home. They had a soundtrack for every bedtime story. Oh, look, it's me, I'm Betty the Bunny. Oh, look, oh, look, it's me, I'm Betty the Bunny. And I am a rabbit, and so I'm in the habit of eating carrots when I'm hungry. Oh, look, oh, look, kiss me, I'm Betty the Bunny. Really, it was like a magical playground for the mind. It, you know, everything was a metaphor. And that's really the only way I can decode the world around me. And are you still making them up as you go along? Yes. Or you... In Carly's Martha's Vineyard kitchen, songs about the simple things are regular with these two. I want some coffee, it's so good. Get it right now, get it right now. La, 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 We sing, you know, it's very much like my house was with my sisters and my mother. We just went around singing. Whether it was for my sake, because it was so much easier to sing than it was to talk, or whether it was just fun for everybody to turn our lives into a musical comedy <laughs> starring the Simons. <laughs> what Sally and her brother learned from their mom was that while school was incredibly difficult, they could amplify what they did well, things she's now teaching her own child, Bodhi, who, you guessed it, is dyslexic. You feel like you've got a lot of support? Mm -hmm. A lot. A lot coming from my mom. What do you want for your son, Bodhi? I want him to say, you know, this life is a complete mystery and completely strange, and I'm so into exploring it. And that's what Carly hopes others take away from sharing her dyslexic journey. What is so wonderful is to be able to see the glass may be half empty in one area, but it's half full in another. It's not a terrible place to go at all, and it's a happy place to be. Just an amazing story of how they handled this, yeah. but in addition to singing, they had this game they played. They had this game, and it's called Essences, and it makes you think in terms of metaphors. Mm -hmm. So if I tell you I'm thinking of a person, mm -hmm. um, and you try to guess who that person is by asking me, if that person was a plant, what would they be? If that person was a fruit, what would they be? You're always thinking in metaphors. So you have a yes. person in mind. I have a person in mind for you. And I would say, okay, so if this person were a car, what kind of car would this person be? 1969 Chevy. <laughs> <laughs> I get how this game works. I'm going to say Peter Mahigan. You guessed it. That's but right. You're always thinking in those metaphors. Yeah, and as we and heard from I Sally, mean, that helped her so much. It helps them so much. Mm -hmm. And that was the way she decoded the world. So wow. it was a big part of their lives. Well, Sally Taylor inspires variations on the theme of dyslexia. How could you do better than to spread something that's that's wonderful art, which is art. When they first met, Dean Braganier and Sally Taylor were attracted to each other's sensitivity and vulnerability, traits that evolved from growing up dyslexic. I think that there's a lot to be said about, um, you know, if it doesn't break you, if your dyslexia doesn't break you, or your disability or your different ability doesn't break you, then it gives you this incredible um, strength. Strength that Sally expresses fearlessly in this Martha's Vineyard gallery. I welcome you in with open arms and open minds to consensus. Her inspiration for this exhibit comes from an ancient fable about the elephant and the blind men. And the way that the fable goes is that these blind men come across this elephant in their path and each of them touches a different part of the elephant. So the one that feels the trunk is sure that elephant is a branch. 
the one that touches the leg thinks it's a pillar, the one that feels the ear thinks it's a fan, and then each of them sort of battle for their version. When I heard this fable, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm just like one of these blind men feeling just one single part of space and time. So Sally created her own elephant of sorts, using nature images of Martha's Vineyard as the starting point. And then I gave each of those photographs to a different musician and I said, what does this mean to you? There's no right or wrong answer. There's no good or bad answer. I just want to understand your version of it. After interpreting the picture, each musician created a song. How long have we waited for your love? How Sally took those songs and gave them to painters. So we listened to the music, I think only twice maybe, and fell in love with it and he said to me, I know what I want to do. And the next day he went to a studio. It was in him, he had to get it out onto the canvas. Each painting she gave to a perfumer. And it gave birth to this um, perfume here. Which was sent on to poets and the poems to sculptors, whose creations dancers then interpreted until all of the senses were represented. The result was a unique exhibit called Consensus. So each of these spaces represents a different chain reaction. 22 chain reactions in all, like a giant game of telephone expressed through 150 artists from around the world. When I saw the, the photograph, I was immediately inspired. I was almost thinking from, from the tree's perspective. I really didn't completely get it until I saw the last piece in my chain. And when I saw that, it really, uh, I got it. How could you do better than to spread something that's, that's wonderful art, which is art? There's this creative A monumental undertaking. She says she wouldn't have conceived if she wasn't dyslexic. When I came over here, all of a sudden the color jumped out at me. Oh, I love and that. And examining how differently each person sees things. Just realizing and recognizing that it's really, just like in school, it's just taking the next step. Saying, I don't need to know how I'm gonna to get to X. I don't know how this is gonna like, you know, get completely created by 150 artists from around the world. I don't know how this is gonna be put onto a huge shipping container and transferred, you know, I, I don't need to know any of that. All I need to know is today, who is gonna translate this poem into a dance? That's all I need to know and then I go. It's been a satisfying and surprising journey. Just touching it feels like touching the desert. You know, yeah. It's that devoid of... Moisture of yeah. life. I love seeing the progression of it. Watching, listening, and learning. Each of our versions of reality matter equally, and that's really what the project is about, is about seeing things from different perspectives, and allowing us, each of us, the freedom to expose our unique versions of reality. That is incredible and brilliant. It's so deep. It is so brilliant. Un and to describe and explain her feelings and her dyslexia in this way mm -hmm. is just incredible to me. Um, never been done before, as far as they know, As right? far as anyone knows, nothing like this has ever been attempted, and it took Sally two and a half years to do it. It was a very emotional project for her. Mm -hmm. The art has just been auctioned off for this one. She's putting the proceeds toward her next consensus ah, project. Incredible. So you'll see it again. Unlocking the potential of dyslexia when we come back. Obviously a remarkable family, a lot of love, a lot of support with yep. everybody there. And resources. Um, and resources, not everybody has that. Um, but what they say though, it's really important to catch dyslexic children before they get to a point where they fail. You can't wait for them right. to fail. And I want to show you some um, graphics here that's going to illustrate why you can't wait. 35% of dyslexic students fail to graduate wow. from high school. 50% of the youth juvenile detention system is made up of dyslexics. 60% of adolescents in drug and alcohol rehabilitation programs are dyslexics. And here's what happens if you get to them and help them. 35% of uh, are become entrepreneurs. 40% self-made millionaires. 50% of all NASA employees that is are dyslexic. That is unbelievable, right. So the key is identifying early yep. and then not focusing on the difficulties but finding the aptitudes the and abilities. abilities that they have and fostering Train them in a language they understand mm -hmm. 
foster those skills, teach them what they need to know, and set them free. As Carly likes to say, just add water at that just point. Just add water. And this <laughs> is spreading around uh, the country and beyond. It is. It's actually in other countries, too. Homeschoolers in Australia, Botswana, Macedonia are now using it. There are Boston schools that are going online with this. Um, this week, there's a school in Washington, D.C., the wow. landmark school in Beverly. It's spreading. The message is spreading. Incredible work. Thank you for bringing the story to us. Thanks to the entire family for sharing their story it's with us. Great to tell the as story. Well. Really remarkable. And that is Chronicle for tonight. Thanks very much for joining us. I'm Anthony Everett. And I'm Heather Unruh. It's been great to be with you. Hope to see you back here tomorrow night, 730 on Channel 5.